4K. It comes with the camera, a lens cap, and a lens shroud. And I also have some other uh, accessories that I purchased for it. I purchased a uh, microphone mount. If I'm on a job somewhere and I need or want to use the camera, and I don't have any other mounting mechanism, I can screw it onto that and put it in a microphone stand. And this is a power cord from a micro to a regular USB. So you don't have to run on battery power all the time. This is a clamp mount and it's very heavy and very sturdy. You can clamp it onto just about anything. And this is uh, a micro to a USB-C, so I can plug the camera into my iPad. And of course, Dead Cat, uh, wind, wind sock. And the Q2N 4K attaches to a standard camera stand. And here's the camera with the microphones in front. Also in the back. Power button here. And you can turn off the camera. You can do 4K 30 frames, 4K 24, uh, they call it the cinema mode, 1080 at 60 frames, 1080 at 30 frames, and at 24 frames and 720 at 30 frames. You have a field of view, you can change. Scene, you have uh, outdoor sunset, uh, where it automatically tries to optimize uh, the settings for Your situation. Yeah, there's a variety of things here. Uh, the low cut, there's some options there. Get back to off. The audio, I'm going to run mine at the highest setting because the uh, audio is going to be uh, important, maybe even over the video, but you got 16-bit, 24-bit, 48K, and 96K. Uh, you can uh, turn the gain on to where it automatically uh, sets it and adjusts it. Or you can turn it off and the dial, you can manually, manually set the gain. Uh, I've had to uh, do a little experimenting to adjust it here to see what works in this room and the distance from the mic and you know, you just find what works for you. Or you can use the auto setting. And you have uh, the micro input and uh, the small HDMI underneath. On this side, let's get it where we can see it. This is uh, volume level control when you are listening to the playback. You have a headphone in, and I don't think, 
it's hard to see. But if you want to send in a different signal, uh, that's the port for it. If you notice, there's a green light indicating power. When we push the record button, now it's recording, you see the, the timer and the red indicator on the screen. You see your levels. And also it lets you know that it's recording with the red light. Uh, also, if you uh, are too loud and it peaks or clips, uh, the red light flashes. So it's an indicator to you on the front side of the camera that you might need to adjust your levels. So pretty thoughtful design. Uh, it's, I've only had it out of the box a little bit. Uh, it seems really easy to use. And I'm, uh, I like what I first saw, but we're going to do some videos at the different video quality. And I'm going to do it uh, with the audio on the 96K, the 24-bit setting. And maybe uh, you can see what the difference is and uh, make your comments about it. I have to experiment to see what I like. Obviously, if you use the highest video setting, uh, it's going to use more memory and uh, it uses a mini card. One of those mini SD cards and I think mine is 235 gigs uh, was the largest one I could find. So I, I think even recording uh, at 4K, I'm going to have uh, plenty of storage, unless I'm going to record a, a two-hour show or a four-hour dance where you have a bunch of songs. Uh, you might want to do it at a at 1080 or, or maybe even 720, depending on how important the video is versus the audio. But lots of options, which makes it great, in my opinion. When you're hooked up to an iPad or computer, Mac, some device. When you turn on the camera, you get a little picture there. You're on shore power instead of battery power. And then you have some options. You can run this as a webcam for your device. You can use it as a USB mic for your device. And you can also use it as a card reader. So the information you have stored on your SD card, uh, video and audio that you've taken with the camera, you can transfer it over into your uh, device, whether it's an iPad, another tablet, Mac, PC. And then you can work with the files in whatever software you want to use, whether it's iMovie or the Zoom software that's free on their website, or if you have some uh, more robust uh, video and audio editing software, you can just pull the files right off of here on the camera and work with them and do whatever you like. Pretty easy stuff. <laughs>
Stay tuned for more videos featuring the Zoom Q2N 4K.